good evening. Um, my name is Michelle Hatherell, and I am from the Yurok Indian Reservation in Humboldt County, California. How many people here are familiar with Humboldt County? Woo! Woo! Yeah! 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 Stoners. That's how you would. <laughs> Uh, my dad was a Yurok Indian, and my mom was a hot farming Pentecostal hippie from Arkansas. Oh, wow. And, uh, like, I, I know you're looking at me right now and you're thinking, whoa, she's way too white to be half Indian. Don't worry, I get that all the time. Uh, in fact, the first person to think that was most likely my dad. <laughs> yeah, it was it was really difficult growing up on the reservation. I was the only white kid, and that really says a lot because I, I had 10 brothers and sisters. <laughs> Needless to say, the first time my dad saw the blue-eyed milkman, he declared the entire family lactose intolerant. <laughs> so I'm gonna explain to you some of the good things and some of the bad things about growing up on a reservation, being a white kid. Uh, one of the really bad things is it was really difficult to date because they were trying to preserve their race and the Indian boys needed to marry the Indian girls and so they could have Indian babies. And so the, the mothers and the grandmothers were always telling me, you know, Michelle, there's not enough Indian boys for you. You can't have an Indian boy. And so I grew up kind of with this idea that there was this huge shortage of Indians in the world <laughs> until I left the reservation and I found 1.2 billion Indians in a place called India. <laughs> Uh, I mean, apparently the Kama Sutra was uh, invented there for a reason, because they are having some kids. Uh, no, there's like a huge difference between Indians on my reservation and Indians in India. Uh, first of all, the Yurok Indian Reservation, we are a, a matriarch society, which means women rule, we bring home the bacon, we cook it to you, we're totally in charge. And India is a patriarch society, which means we let the men think they roll. <laughs> um, let's see, another thing I personally think was a bummer about the reservation, but uh, some people might think it's a good thing depending on how much pot they were smoking. <laughs> but uh, we had no electricity. We had no phones. We had no running water. And uh, our toilet was outside. Uh, we lit our house every night with, a ker with kerosene lamps. And actually, I say that plural, like as if we were one of the rich people who could afford more than one. Uh, see, another bad thing about the reservation would be um, the education system. It, uh, we had 36 kids in our elementary school, K through 8. Eight of us were brothers and sisters. 16 of us were cousins. We had two teachers. One had four grades, one had five grades. And uh, they really missed out on some of the important things, like geography and history, maybe some of the unimportant things like reading and writing. <laughs> but uh, it's, it's terrible. My, my first husband, I brought him home to meet my family. He's from Bulgaria. I introduced him to my sister and she says, uh, Bulgaria, huh? What part of Mexico is that in? <laughs> and it's not fair. I shouldn't blame it all on the education system because, um, well, my mom smoked a lot of pot when she was pregnant. <laughs> I have I have three brothers and sisters that turned out completely stupid. And I apparently not stupid, but I was born with chronic munchies. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, when I when I left the reservation I had to find a way to make money. My first job was at a nursing home. My next job was working with children with special needs, and now I'm a nanny. So pretty much my entire life, I have been an ass wiper. <laughs> uh, the twins I take care of, they're almost three. They're, they're about to be potty trained, and it'll be so exciting for me. It'll be the first time in 11 years that the only ass I'm wiping is my own. <laughs> finally, finally, she's going to get undivided attention. <laughs> uh, um, I'm really hoping that that helps me out in my social life. Uh, I'm 28 years old, and I have been divorced twice. Seriously. Um, Neither of my husbands wanted to divorce me. I mean, who would, right? <laughs> but uh, my first husband, I, I sat him down, I talked to him, and I was like, uh, Johnny, you're, you're a tallywhacker. 
well, I'm supposed to say dick, but I'm not going to. <laughs> your tally locker is just too big. I, I'm not woman enough to handle it. You should definitely go find another woman who wants that giant penis. And, uh, and of course, he's like, oh, give me those papers. He signs them right away. I, I, I tried to begin with my second husband, but uh, he's, he's from India, and come on, nobody's going to believe that. <laughs> Um, I'd like to give like a special thank you tonight for the No Name Bar for giving me this opportunity and special thank you to Lion. Uh, he's serving up the drinks that not only make me dead sexy, but also make my drugs pretty funny. <laughs>